Hello everyone and assalamu alaikum. This is Introduction to Psychology Part 1 PSY 312 by Dear Knowledge. Okay, in our last video we have completed the part 1 in which we discussed in great detail about the nature of light and properties of light in psychological perspective. So if you haven't watched that video, I've given a link in description. You can click on that link and watch that video because if you want to study the um, visual system of uh, humans, so understanding uh, or having the knowledge about the nature of light and properties of light is um, very important. So in this video, we'll start with the part two of the lesson two of chapter four. And lesson two is about vision and in which we are supposed to complete the structure and functions of the eye. And in this video, we will cover the part two in which we'll start with the eye the, and we will discuss, um, we will have a, a general discussion on structure and function of the eye. So let's start with our today's video, which is the eye, uh, which will be about how we see, how we see an object or how we see the world and the human visual system. Now, basically, the eye is similar to a camera in, in that it tries to get the best possible picture of the world. And the picture has to be well focused, not too dark or too light and should have enough contrast. And each of this is done by um, different structures of the eye and together they help constitute an image of the um, visual world. Now, the eye is well designed to capture and focus light um, to the visual receptors and it also houses these receptors which convert um, visual input into neural energy. We, we will discuss the path of light through the several structures that are involved in this process in this video. So I'll start with an example. Uh, suppose you are watching your neighbor's yellow and white tabby uh, cat sunning himself on the front step. Now how do you see the cat? Simply seeing a yellow tabby cat involves a complex change of um, chain of events, uh, which will describe the process um, of uh, vision from the object to the brain in this video. And you can trace the path of light waves through the eye. Now, basically, before clearing this example, how uh, this process is done, how complex chain of events are involved. So uh, I will start uh, with a uh, with structure of the eye. So you can understand different parts of the eye, different structures of the eye. And we'll uh, discuss a little bit its functions of the eye. So basically, if you talk about the structure of the eye, so eye is almost, almost perfect sphere composed of two fluid filled chamber and when we look at a person's eye we see three main parts the sclera iris and the pupil the sclera is a white colored um, outer part of the eye which helps to maintain its shape and protect it from injury and and the iris is basically the colored portion of the eye and can have colored uh, color ranging from light blue to dark brown and it is the iris that gives the eye its distinct color and the pupil uh, is basically the opening in the center of the iris and is usually black in color and the iris um, has um, muscles that control the size of the pupil by controlling or expanding and thus regulating the amount of light that enters the eye. And it functions like a pressure of camera closing so that the less light enters when there is too much and dilating to let in more light when there is less. So uh, this is the whole process which we'll be discussing throughout this video. So basically what happens is that light passes through the clear cornea into the first chamber. Um, Cornea is basically, I've included two definitions of cornea. The first one is that the protecting coating on the surface of the eye through which light passes is cornea. And the second definition is a clear membrane covering the visible part of the eye that helps gather and direct incoming light. As you can see, this part labeled here is basically cornea. If I can zoom the picture, 
can see right here, uh, you will be able to see what uh, how cornea looks like. So basically, when lead passes through the clear cornea into the first chamber, at the back of this chamber, the colored iris opens and closes to regulate how much light passes through the pupil into the lens. Now. As we have already discussed about the iris, the pupil, the lens, but I've also included definitions here in order to clear the point. So I've included two definitions of iris. Um, basically, um, iris is the colored part of the eye behind the cornea that regulates the amount of light that enters. Or the color part of the eye, which is the muscle that controls um, the size of the pupil. Now basically, pupil is the opening of the iris or um, you can say that opening in the middle of the iris that changes size to let in different amount of light is basically iris. As you can see in picture right here, the um, part that shows iris. Now lens, what it actually lens is. You can also see in the picture this part of the eye is basically a lens and you can also understand it more clearly by understanding these definitions which I have included in this video. The first definition is the transparent portion of the eye that focuses light on the retina is lens. And the second definition is a transparent structure located behind the pupil that actively focuses or bends light as it enters the eye. Now basically lens is transparent in colors. And so uh, this um, the lens is held in place by ligaments attached to the ciliary muscles. Now ciliary muscle is basically the muscle of the eye that controls the shape of the lens. As you can see in this picture, now uh, as I've um, discussed about the ciliary muscles that um, the lens is held in place by ligaments attached to ciliary muscles. Now, this muscle focuses images by controlling um, the thickness of the lens so that a clear image falls onto the light sensitive retina at the back of a second chamber. Now when ciliary muscle is uncontracted, the tension of the ligaments stretches the lens relatively flat and when the ciliary muscles contracts, it lessens the tension of the ligaments and the lens thickens. Now this, uh, the lens must be thickened to focus on objects and that is why uh, reading for long periods uh, which involve um, involves prolonged contraction of the ciliary muscles and it makes your eyes feel tired now that is because of the such contraction now um if i talk about um the process how the light falls um on your eye and how it enters and the passage of light from your um, eye to your retina so first light wave reflects from the cat enters your eye that um, yellow and white tabby cat um, which was sunning himself on the front step which we that first example of this video so how you see that cat is that first light waves reflected from the cat into your eye passing through the cornea uh, pupil and the lens so these are the basically steps um, or the places through which the light pass. Now the cornea, a clear membrane that covers the front of the eye, helps gather and um, direct incoming light. And the sclera or um, a white portion of the eye is a tough fibrous tissue that covers the eyeball, except for the cornea. Now the pupil is a black opening in the middle of the eye and pupil is surrounded by the iris, the color structure that we uh, refer to when we say that someone has brown or blue eyes. Now the iris is actually um, a ring of muscles that uh, contract or expand to precisely control um, the size of the pupil. And Thus, the amount of light entering the eye. Now, in dim light, the iris widens the pupil to let light in, and in bright light, the iris 
narrows the pupil. Now, uh, but behind the pupil is the lens, which is another transparent structure in a process called accommodation, which we'll be uh, again discussing in great detail. Now, the real business of transducing light waves is carried out in retina by two types of receptors. Um, the first one is roads and the second one is cons, which we will be discussing in great, great detail. So let's start with the cons. I've included a definition of the con uh, cons. Um, the six million receptor cells located mostly in the center of the retina that transduce light waves into neural impulse, thereby coding information about light, dark and color. Now basically, um, cones are concentrated in the center of the retina with the um, uh, like uh, concentration of a uh, central spot called fovea. Now, uh, what actually is fovea? Fovea is fovea is basically the central spot of the retina, uh, which contains the greatest concentration of cones. Now, in good light, uh, visual activity, which is the cleanness and sharpness of vision. Now, in good light, visual activity is best for images that are focused directly on the fovea, largely because of the high concentration of cones. And roads are basically, I have included definitions. So, um, the 125 million cells located outside the center of the retina that transduce light waves into the neural impulses, um, thereby coding information about light and dark. Now, the roads are basically located throughout the retina except in the center of the fovea. Now, their role in vision differs from that of the cones in four main ways. First, because of their location, they are basically uh, largely responsible for peripheral vision, a vision at the top, bottom and sides of the uh, visual field and whereas cones play little role in this aspect of seeing and second uh, the uh, roads are more um, sensitive or you can say they are hundreds of times more sensitive to light than cones and this means that they play a far more important role in vision um, in dim light than do the cones and third um, the roads produce important um, you can say um, uh, leading from um, import um, And it produce images, roads uh, produce images leading from um, that are perceived with less visual activity than do cones. So the roads produce images that are uh, perceived with less visual activity than do cones, and this is largely because um, the neurons leading from several roads often converge so that their um, impulses are sent to the brain on a single nerve fiber. So in contrast, cones more commonly send their messages to the brain um, along separate nerve fibers, um, giving the brain more precise information about the location of the stimulation of the brain. And the last, the fourth one is, uh, the fourth difference between the roads and cones is that um, Color vision, yes, concern color vision. The difference between the roads and cones concerns color vision, and both types of receptors respond to various um, variations in light and dark in terms of the number of receptors that um, fire and the frequency uh, with which they fire, but only the cones can code information about 
colors because the roads are uh, roads do not detect color and because the cones can respond only in bright light we can uh, we can see only uh, indistinct form of black and gray in almost dark room and although light of different wavelengths is still present in the room during near um, darkness um, the roads have no way of sending impulses, um, sending messages about them to the brain. So uh, colors disappear from the view. So this was about the roads and cones and uh, about the people. Uh, when the light increases in your room, people become smaller and enlarges uh when you uh, when when you decrease the light and this helps the eye to function in an appropriate or in an optimal manner under different light conditions so um this is uh, also useful uh for you because it helps uh, um, to function uh, this helps the eye to function in an optimal manner under the different light conditions. So light enters through a transparent membrane in front of the eye called cornea, which we have discussed, uh, which is um, attached to the white outer wall of um, the eye, um, which we discussed in one of our... So if we discuss about the trace of the light, how the light passes from... Uh, the eye to the brain and uh, to the retina so in this video we are um, here we are discussing how the light is uh, passed from the eye to the retina so light enters through a transparent membrane in front of the eye called cornea and which is attached to a white outer wall of the eye behind the cornea is a substance very much like a thickened water called aqueous humor um, uh, keeps the front of the eye firm and slightly curved. Now light travels through this fluid to reach the iris and from this it passes to uh, through the pupil and then on to the crystalline lens behind it and the lens is transparent uh, elastic structure filled with a gelatinous material called um, vitreous humor and um, this the function of both the cornea and the lenses to focus the incoming light at the back of the eye and this is how um, the light is passed from um, the cornea to the retina and we have also discussed about the rows and cones in retina and how um, the rows functions and how cord function, um, cones functions but in order to clear this point I'll be giving some more detailed discussion on the retina and some other interesting topics. Would you be surprised to learn that you are partly or partially blind in each eye? The spot near the center of the retina where the optic nerve is uh, attached contains roads or cones. Um, because there is no usual receptor at this point, it is known as blind spot. And blind spot is basically the spot um, where the optic nerve attached to the retina, which contains no rods and cons. Now, uh, we are not normally aware of this blind spot because we fill in the missing information during the process of seeing by using information uh, coming in form um uh, the other parts of the retina and um coded message from the roads and cones are processed in the uh, preliminary way uh, in the neurons of the retina and are then sent to the visual areas of the left and right occipital lobe of the cerebral cortex for the interpretation now as we know that the information from the eye is transmitted to the visual areas in the complicated fashion, in a complicated fashion, um, as we have seen, we already seen the picture uh, which I have shown in this video. Now, stimuli, uh, at, uh, eye is basically um, the the stimuli that are on your right falls on the left side of the each eye and information from uh, right uh, visual field um, basically 
of both eyes and to the visual area of the occipital lobe of the left visual cerebral hemisphere and after the optic nerves cross over um, at the optic um, chalcum in the brain uh, information from uh, stimuli on your left falls on the right side of each eye and is sent to the visual area in right cerebral hemisphere and it's a bit confusing when you read about it for the first time but the brain message messages to keep it all straight so in this video we just give a little bit brief and general discussion about the structure of the eye and a little bit about the function of the eye and in my next video i will be discussing the retina the blind spot and in order to clear the point um i'll be giving a little bit deep um lectures i will be a little bit up uploading a little bit deep lectures in order to clear the point about the eye so we will be discussing the retina and the blind spot in great detail in our next video so this was the end of the video if you like the video you can click on the like button if not you can ask us in the comments section and we will be happy to help you out plus if you want to stay notified for the upcoming videos you can subscribe to our channel you can subscribe to your knowledge you can click on the bell icon so you will never ever miss any notification plus you can share the link of the channel this video with your family members and friends because sharing is caring until then allah hafiz